And now, here's your host, Dan Harari. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight on Paranormal Tonight. My name is Dan Harari, and uh, hope you all had a nice Valentine's Day yesterday. We have the perfect guest tonight to tell us about the history of Valentine's Day and love and romance and all those good things. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I've been a Hollywood publicist for 40 years. Uh, we're broadcasting tonight from my office in beautiful downtown Beverly Hills. I know my show says live from Hollywood. It's paranormal tonight, but technically it's live from Beverly Hills. It's paranormal tonight. I figure that's, you know, that's pretty close. Um, I'm also the author of two books, Flirting with Fame, which is right here. And that's the history of my career in Hollywood and all the wacky stories I have with a lot of famous celebrities. And uh, every week my mother watches the show and she yells at me. She goes, you know, Danny, you're not promoting your books enough. You got to promote your books. So, Mom, I'm promoting my books. OK, flirting with fame. Amazon, of course. My other book, After They Came. This is my science fiction novel about benevolent aliens who come to Earth to save mankind. Came out last year. And because of this book, I've met a lot of very, very prominent UFO re researchers and, and ufologists from around the world. And they're actually my friends now. I've become very good friends with a lot of the major UFO people. So this book, after they came, really uh, affected my life. Please check them out on Amazon. OK, I did that for my mom. Tonight, we have the perfect post-Valentine's Day guest. Uh, my guest tonight is my very dear friend, Dr. Ava Cadell. Ava began her career as a model in Europe before relocating to Hollywood in 1982. There, she became an actress, appearing in many fun action films, including a movie called Commando with Arnold Schwarzenegger. And later, she became a TV star, and she appeared on the Playboy channel as a movie critic on a TV show called Pillow Previews. And the reason I bring that up, of course, is that's where I met Ava Cadell. I met her on the set of Pillow Previews in 1984, 40 years ago. I met Ava Cadell 40 <laughs> years ago. I had hair then. That's how long ago it was when we met. I was the publicist for the Playboy Channel at the time. Ava then went on to reinvent herself numerous times. She earned two doctorate degrees in human behavior because before coining the term loveology. Ava created the word loveology, which is a fantastic word. She then became a loveologist, which is a certified love coach, and opened an office in West Hollywood. There she specialized in helping couples learn how to better communicate with each other. Next, becoming a global speaker, Ava has lectured in more than 50 countries all across North America, Europe, Asia, Africa, and Australia. Ava is author, also the author of 11 books, including Neuro Loveology, The Power to Mindful Love and Sex, which was endorsed by Dr. John Gray. And Dr. John Gray is the man who wrote uh, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. Continuing, continuing her evolution, Ava then went on to become the founder of Loveology University, where she created 40 online courses. Through that online educational website, she has trained thousands of people around the world, helping them to become certified relationship, love, and healing coaches. In 2022, Ava acquired a 45-acre property near Santa Barbara, California from Zen Monks. She named the property, what else? the Loveology Retreat. The property includes a Buddhist temple and a giant stupa. I've been there, it's magnificent. At the site, she trains certified relationship coaches who bring their clients to private retreats from around the world 
And there, uh, they all, their focus is to help people heal and reinvent themselves. So now let's bring in race, my dear friend and colleague and someone who I admire and love very much, Dr. Ava Cadell. Wow, yeah. what an amazing introduction. Thank you, Dan. And there she congratulations is. There she is. on your books. Thank you. My books, my podcast, my UFO. All that, my, yes. All, all these wonderful things. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. I'm at my retreat with my dogs and goats and cats, and I'm great. Thank you. That's great. That's great. I was there, I think it was summer of 2022 or 20, one of those summers, and it was we really <laughs> We had a lot of fun that day. It was a wonderful place. We um, did. Let's jump right in, shall we? I have some prepared questions and let's rock and roll. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, babe, here we go. You went from being a model and an actress to a therapist, global speaker, author, and highly successful healer. Uh, you say you reinvented yourself seven times, right? How did you do all those things? And before you start race, let's put up slide number one, please. Oh, <laughs> all right. So, so we talk and we'll show some fun pictures as you're speaking. Well, yes, I started with some modeling assignments. I did some billboards for Myers Rum and the Bush Gardens in Florida. And then I came to Hollywood to pursue my acting career. And my first job was in the theater in a play by Buddy Epson. And it was called Cabaret Dada. <laughs> now that play helped me to land an acting agent and then I was fortunate to be cast in lots of TV shows that you mentioned as well as my own show on the Playboy channel which is where we met and then I also got roles in movies but I was getting kind of typecast as a bimbo <laughs> not that that's a bad thing it kind of felt like a, a backhanded compliment. However, there was an unexpected silver lining that I received in the form of lots of fan mail. And apart from wanting sexy photos, you know, autographed, a lot of people, especially men, were asking me how to help them with their love lives and their intimacy issues. But I really wasn't comfortable answering those letters because I didn't feel like I was qualified to do so, even though I was playing all these bimbo roles. So that's when I decided to reinvent my life from modeling and acting to going back to university and to get two doctorates in human behavior so that I could open up my own private practice and basically help people to overcome, you know, whatever issues they have that were preventing them from having healthy, loving relationships. So that's how I started reinventing my life from modeling to acting to going back to university. And then, of course, I became a media therapist and a love coach, like you said. Absolutely so, right. All right. So race that's yeah. number, that's slide two. There's slide three. You mentioned Myers Rum. I love that picture, Ava. That's such a wonderful picture. Ah, thank you. And then and then there you go. There's that's the that's model, ladies and gentlemen, model Ava Cadell. What a wonderful photo. <laughs> it's such a wonderful photo. And I was photo. young and innocent. Yeah, and I had hair and you and I lived across the street from each other. I should mention I that. know it's fantastic. Yeah. We were meant to connect. I do believe in destiny. Yeah, we were meant to be friends. So, all right. So let's see now. Uh, what's next here? Uh, Race, let's put up slide number five, please. There we go. Ah, uh, there I am looking so right. innocent. So in the 70s and 80s, you were a sex symbol, like you mentioned. You were on shows like The Fall Guy, Dallas, Hotel, Love Boat, Mike Hammer, and in movies like Commando and Fit to Kill, uh, which I think is the next. Wait, well, keep, keep this slide up, Race, for a second. We met in 84, right? We met, you and I met this day, Ava, when this photo was taken, I was standing right there with the photographer. That's oh, the really? Day. Who was the That's, photographer? Do you remember? I, I don't remember, but this is the day we met. 
I believe, I believe it was May 84. So it's exactly 40 years. We've been friends for 40 oh years. Oh my goodness. Isn't that crazy? That's longer um, than most marriages. I know you and I have been, we've never had a, a fight or an argument. We've been really good friends for no. 40, every day for 40 years. But you know, our birthdays are very close. So astrologically, we're definitely, you know, we have synchronized energy. Absolutely. I'm June 17, you're June 15. Yeah, I remember. Um, uh, let's see. All right, uh, race next one, slide six, please. All right, so Ava, look, do you remember this? I do not. Where are we? Okay, look at the far left. Yeah, that's you and me. I see that we were you at good. You've got a mustache, you've got nice glasses. Look well, how that's you before look so I had them, and <laughs> that's before I had children, and, and, and a lot of things changed. <laughs> So this is you and I at a Playboy Mansion party. Oh. At Hugh Hefner's backyard under a tent. Wow. And do you recognize the woman in the center of the photo? Isn't that Hef isn't that Christy Hefner? That's Christy Hefner. She yeah. was ru running Playboy Enterprises at the time. And the man she was talking to was the president of the Playboy Channel. Michael Brandman, I think, was his name. Oh, okay. So That's you and I, a cool photo. you and I were there. I found it, Ava. I, I spent hours digging through my scrapbooks because I uh, knew I I had it, and I enhanced it with the color and everything. But isn't that a fun photo it's of us? Phenomenal! I love it. Yes, it's, it's the very first photo of us ever taken together. Ah, uh. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. Race next photo, please. Okay, Ooh. there you are. So, all mm -hmm. right. So you're in the far right. This movie's called Fit to Kill. Is that correct? Um, I think it is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All of Andy Sedaris movies sound the same. And I was in yeah. Hard Hunted, Fit to Kill, Do or Die. Yeah. Hard uh, to Kill, Hard to Hunt. All the same. Yeah. Right? I mean, but it was great. I was a hit woman in that movie. <laughs> that is such a great picture. So I don't know if I ever told you, but the second to the left from the left, Donna Spear, the blonde, I had such a crush on her. Ah. Uh, and she and I did a photo shoot together for Playboy during that era. And I took her to lunch one day to Carney's. Do you know Carney's hot dogs yeah. and hamburgers? We yes. had lunch. And I and I I said, Donna, I said, you're so pretty. I said, if I wasn't married, I would so ask you out. She chuckled. It turns out she was dating, she was dating Bill Cosby at the time. Oh my goodness. Isn't that funny? <laughs> Like she's gonna go out with me. She's dating Bill Cosby at the time. I didn't know that. But she and had lunch with you, Dan. That's a that's pretty good. That's as far as I ever got with Donna. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful woman. So well, I guess my question, which you answered, but we could go a little deeper. How did your sex symbol past affect the course of your career and morph you into becoming a love coach? And you could go into that maybe a little deeper. Well, first and foremost, I'm so grateful to Playboy for making me the host of Pillow Previews because it introduced us to each other. And, you know, as you said, we've been friends ever since. So that's very near and dear to my heart. Um, but yeah, you know, I think that my evolution from the Playboy channel um, to becoming the founder of Loveology University and training love coaches, was actually my natural progression for my career. And it really gave me a platform to educate and empower people um, to make love a priority in their lives. And then I'm sure you've heard that saying that we all teach what we need to learn the most. Well, that's me. <laughs> I, I needed to learn at an early stage in my life all about love and romance and intimacy. Um, because I was raised by nuns, strict nuns, by the way, <laughs> right. who uh, told me that if I ever kissed a boy, a baby would pop out of my mouth. So I grew up a very confused teenager, and um, it really was my destiny to be a love guru, which, and now I feel like I'm actually a healer as well, so. Yeah, I'm, I I love my mission, my my life's mission, and I want to leave a legacy. You know, I want to, I want someone to say after I've gone, "Oh, yes, Doctor Ava helped me to love and heal." That would be so cool. 
That's wonderful. It really is. Well, you have so many books you've written. You have a beautiful retreat property. You've helped thousands of people. You've lectured all over the world. I mean, Ava, you sure from a sex symbol, you sure evolved. And I so admire <laughs> how you how you evolved yourself. It, it, ah, it's very you. commendable, really. It is. Um, all right, let's jump over. So yesterday was Valentine's Day, and obviously you know a lot about that. Can you tell us what what's the mythology of Valentine's Day? Uh, Cupid, Saint Valentine, Aphrodite, any of those things? Because I know none of <laughs> I, I know I know none of that information. Well, you got the names right. So in Greek mythology, Cupid was the son of Aphrodite, who was the goddess of love, and Eros was the god of love. So Cupid was their son, who was kind of like a matchmaker. He connected two people by shooting his arrows of love that made them instantly fall madly in love with each other. But historically, um, it is said that uh, Romans held an annual lottery where they placed women's names in a box and then men chose their names at random which resulted in having a female companion for the duration of one year. It's kind of creative, actually. Um, now, St. Valentine, he was a priest who performed weddings in the third century, but marriage was banned by Emperor Claudius because he thought that it made men very poor soldiers if they had a wife and children at home. So he decided to execute St. Valentine on February the 14th by cutting his head off. <laughs> Not very romantic at all. Right. However, Valentine's Day was only celebrated in the 14th century when St. Valentine was made a martyr by the Catholic Church. And that's when the exchange of cards and gifts and an expression of love every year became a very famous holiday. So, <laughs> How's so that for a story? That's very interesting. So it's about <laughs> six, it sounds like it's six or 600 years old. And it started where? What country did it start in? The Romans. Rome. And, well, and yeah. That, I mean, the Roman, in history, it was the Romans. In mythology, it was the Greeks the Greeks. Okay. And then the other day when we were speaking, you mentioned that people around the world celebrate Valentine's Day in different ways. Do you know some of those? I do. Actually, most countries now do celebrate Valentine's Day by giving flowers and chocolates. But there are a few countries who celebrate Valentine's Day in their own way, such as in Denmark, lovers exchange handmade cards with pressed white flowers, which are called snowdrops. That's a lot of work, isn't it, Dan, to do <laughs> right. that? Every year, yeah? Yeah, right? right? But they do, it in, they do it in Denmark. Now, in Japan, only women buy gifts for their male partners and lovers on Valentine's Day, but men cannot return gifts until March 14th which is called the white day. Wow. So you see men have an extra month to find the perfect present. Very unfair, but my favorite, and I think you'll like this one, is in Germany, couples exchange pig-shaped gifts because the pig <laughs> is the symbol of love and lust. In How's Germany, that? in Germany, obviously. In Germany. <laughs> Right. Thus the, thus the Nazis. So there you go, right? Maybe. I don't know about that, but... <laughs> That's very peculiar. Anyway, <laughs> wow. we have some good friends from Germany, so I, I thought it was hilarious. That's really something. Yeah, I didn't know any of those things. Uh, Race, can we please put up slide number eight? Ah. There we go. All right. So, Ava, after you ended your modeling and acting career... You became a very well-known love and relationship therapist. I remember visiting you there at your at your office, West Hollywood. You've been helping people on their journeys of love for many years. Uh, you say their journeys are marked by growth, understanding, and connection. Those are terrific things. What are some of the ways you help people 
with healing and self-discovery and love and romance. So I've created these amazing courses to help people find love, um, create passion or rekindle passion and really enrich their intimacy, mainly through my programs and courses at Loveology University and then also my seminars. Um, so I do train love coaches, relationship coaches, and most recently I created a certified healing program for coaches which has 150 hours of multimedia content. But I also have a seven hour healing course for individuals. And my healing modality is called HEAL, H-E-A-L, which is an anagram for heal, energy, awareness, and love. Now, you can practice these things daily without having to you know, buy one of my programs. I'll tell you right now, mentally, if you think positive thoughts and you start manifesting, that's going to really help you to find true love. And, and I think true love is self-love and self-value and self-confidence. And then physically, I recommend that you do activities that make you feel happy and healthy. So whether it's dancing or hiking or yoga or boxing, whatever it is, you want to do something daily. And then spiritually, if you want to find spirituality, you need to look inward and explore your, your, own, your own desires and even your own fears through maybe journaling and meditating. And then finally, emotionally, I recommend really trying to forgive yourself and nurturing yourself through self-care. Now, I see you showing a photo of me and Gene Simmons. Right, that's he, right. He uh, came to my office and he asked me for help. He wanted me to hypnotize him so that he would no longer be a sex addict and mm -hmm. uh, extra uh, the TV show on NBC was there to film the whole experience. <laughs> Did it work? Did it work? Well, it did not work, but it was very interesting because when I put him under, I asked him to become one of his most significant relationships. So I told him to become the woman in a relationship that really meant something to him. And so can you guess who he be who he became? His mother. No, <laughs> Diana Ross. <laughs> oh, oh, he he used never to... had an intimate relationship with his mother. Oh, well, but... he dated, he dated, I know he dated Diana Ross. I know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. They lived together. And so when I hypnotized him, he spoke like Diana Ross. His inflections, his body language, everything was Diana Ross. And so I said to him, Diana, <laughs> what do you think of Gene having sex with thousands of women when he's got you? And then yeah. he said in his most feminine voice, I never did understand that about him. Wow. So it was a very enlightening session. And, um, you know, it didn't cure him <laughs> of his sexual compulsion with women because he didn't really want to change. Right. I think he enjoyed being a womanizer. Right. I agree with you. I first, so when I was in high school, I think, I think, you know, this, I worked at a rock concert hall in Asbury park, New Jersey, my hometown. And I worked with Bruce Springsteen before he was famous and Fleetwood Mac before they were famous, but I also worked with kiss before they were famous. So I uh, backstage, I was hanging out with Gene Simmons in 1973 briefly. Okay. A few years ago, I saw him again. I did a press conference. He was there. And I said, hey, Gene, my name is Dan. You and I met in 1973. And he goes, don't, don't you mean 1873? Because <laughs> he, <was really, laughs> he was like old and tired and grumpy. He had just gotten off a plane from Japan. Don't you mean 1873? Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, yeah, it was funny. He remembered the, didn't remember me, but he remembered the, the circumstances when we met. Um, Race, can we do the next one, please? Number 11. So that's you with Kendra and Hank Basket. Is that his name? 
Yes, I think so. That was her husband. Right. Where they're now divorced. And I, yeah. I did a reality show with them, um, hoping that they could fall back in love with each other. But the fact that he was unfaithful to her was really the deal breaker. And she never forgave him for that. You know, some couples can forgive and others cannot. Right, right. I remember when this aired, uh, you and I were talking about this at the time. And she was one of Hugh Hefner's girlfriends at one point. She was one of the girls next door, I think, right? Can yes, and she had Hugh Hefner over to her house. And she was telling me how he had to have all his potato chips whole. <laughs> I heard None that. None of them could be broken. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. I just saw a documentary literally two nights ago. That is true. Ava, we have to take a break. We have to pay some bills, run a couple of commercials, race my brother. Let's uh, rock and roll. And we'll come back with Ava Cadell talking about love, romance, and post-Valentine's Day. While most near-death experiencers return to this plane of existence with alluring tales of their time spent in the presence of the divine, what happens when one crosses the veil into the afterlife, into the void? In the new book, Dying to Meet Them, Mindy Toutfest describes her journey to the afterlife after a devastating aneurysm. How a strange turn of events would lead her to spiritual growth, divine healing, UFO experiences, and a greater understanding of the universe. Get your copy of Dying to Meet Them today at Amazon.com or visit unxmedia.com for more information on this book and more amazing selections from Unx Media Publishing at unxmedia.com. The most important question facing humanity is on the verge of being settled once and for all. The Mutual UFO Network has been at the forefront of this journey for nearly 50 years. Our members worldwide are dedicated to the research, documentation, and awareness that will shape the future of humanity. Won't you join us? Unlock the mysteries of the spirit realm with the new book, Meeting Wallace. In this channeled work by renowned psychic medium Larry Costa, the reader will delve into the profound wisdom of his spirit guide, Wallace. Together, they share the transformative journey of harnessing psychic powers from the celestial plane. Discover the extraordinary psychic gifts that have empowered Larry on his path and immerse yourself in a thought-provoking and awe-inspiring read. Meeting Wallace is a groundbreaking endeavor, and it is a perspective seen through the eyes of a spirit guide. Discover the wisdom of the spirit realm alongside actual photographs of ghosts and spirit guides. Get the book Meeting Wallace by Larry Costa at Amazon.com.
and we're back live from Hollywood. It's Paranormal Tonight. I'm Dan Harari. Uh, just a quick thing. This past weekend at the LAX Hilton was the Conscious Life Expo. I was there over the weekend and I met Whitley Strieber, who gave a fantastic talk about his extraterrestrial uh, experiences. And he showed some videos and still photos that were really mind boggling. And uh, for those of you out there, check out his show here on the UNX Network. He and I became friendly the other day when I met him for the first time. And I met Linda Moulton Howe the other day as well, lovely lady. And she was at the expo speaking on a panel with my good friend Stephen Bassett and Nick Pope and Danny Sheehan, who I just happened to get a chance to meet finally as well. They're all members of the Hollywood Disclosure Alliance, which Steve Bassett and I launched a few months ago and uh, my daughter i know is listening and watching anjali she's uh, helping us out in every possible way with the marketing and promotion so check out hollywood disclosure alliance.org we have fantastic members on that organization now let's go back to my dear friend dr ava cadell let's bring her back in and there she is there she is and anjali says woo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> there she is you okay have the best so daughter. I am. I'm a good father. I did, you know, I really am. I had a wonderful father, Ava. I was very close to my dad and, um, and, uh, and my brothers and I, we were very, very close to our father. And, and we all, the three of us, me and my two brothers, we are very good fathers. You know, it really came down. It, it was handed down. Um, okay. Back to you. You've written 11 books, including your most famous one, I believe, is uh, Neurolivology, endorsed by Dr. John Gray, who wrote Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, very famous book. What is Neurolivology? And before you answer, race, slide number 12, please. There, there I go. am. That's look how in, happy I am. That might be the best picture of you I've ever seen. I mean, look uh, how happy well, I was very happy. I came up with the term neurolivology by blending certain aspects of neuroscience with the science of love. And what I did was I wrote about practical um, exercises that you could do um, to heighten intimacy and to grow your brain cells at the same time. Because we all know that, you know, positive emotions have the power to reprogram circuits in your brain and release these wonderful, pleasurable hormones so that you can overcome, you know, distractions that keep you from that in love feeling with your partner. And so that you can understand the why, the when and the how your love evolves because it really is essential to create to create a mindful bond everybody's using the word mindfulness but when two people are mindful together that really really connects um, something called mirror neurons in our brains and it allows us to understand our partner's intentions and our feelings Oh, there I am. Ah, there that's a are. lovely picture. That's a great Mary Lou Hannah. Is, she, is a, she a friend of yours? Fabulous host. I did her radio show for her. Okay. And then we decided to promote each other's books. And she's a she's such a good host, as are you. You're both <laughs> very good. I don't know if she still has a radio show, but you know, she's also very famous for having an incredible memory. Yes, she can remember every date, every name, every detail of her life. It's a very, it's very what she has. I don't remember the name, but you could say, Mary Lou, uh, uh, September 4th, 1983. She'll tell you what day of the week it was, where she was, what she was wearing, what she was doing. It's, it's, I think there's seven people on the planet Earth that have it. It's, a it's, rare, like a, a, it's called an eidetic memory. Eidetic, thank you, Race. Identic, 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 how do you spell that word? Identic, identic memory. memory, yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's one of the very few people that has that. But I always wanted to meet her, but that's a lovely photo. Well, we, you have to read her book. It's great. Total memory, yeah. It gives you tips on how to uh, remember. <laughs> yeah. 
that's a really great photo. Uh, okay, uh, race next one, please. Fourteen. Ah, oh, look at that. Back in 2017, Eva, which is seven seven years ago already, uh, you and I worked with Dr. Ruth together at the Sexual Health Expo downtown LA. I looked it up. She's 95. She's 95. God bless her. Still alive. Wow. Uh, so, well, I was very excited to meet Dr. Ruth, who was the original pioneer sex expert. Yes. And thanks to you, I was able to give her a Lifetime Achievement Award, right? That's right. Um, I mean, she she is world-renowned. Um, but, you know, we're talking about healing, and I think what makes a really good healer is somebody who has suffered and healed themselves so they can heal others. And um, even... A good therapist is somebody who can relate to their client's suffering. So I think we, again, we need to basically learn and teach what's most important for our own growth. And I think you know me so well. You know, you know that I've suffered from abuse, assault, toxic relationships, disease and loss, all that stuff. Yeah. And um you know, my healing journey began as a teenager when I had to break the habit of my old self-destructive ways to reinvent myself in a new, healthy, happy way. And um, I think my number one advice for healing to anybody listening is to focus first and foremost on self-care as a form of self-love, which will result in more confidence and self-value and happiness and peace of mind. You cannot buy peace of mind. So, you know, forgiving yourself for making horrible mistakes, forgiving others that have hurt you, it's not easy, but it can be done, will essentially give you that peace of mind. You're not going to um, keep you know, negative thoughts in your mind that can result in pain and disease and all kinds of uh, toxic energy. So Absolutely. that's my advice to anybody who's listening. That is very self -care. good. Self-care. What did you do for yourself today, Dan, that was about self-care? I walked five miles. Listened, wow. Listened to my rock and roll music on my little iPod. And uh, when I walk five miles, it takes about under two hours, but it's for me, it's meditation. And really? I, try to, I try to do it every other day. And I come up with my, I came up with uh, books that way. I came up with companies that way. I came up with relationships that way. I manifest, Ava, I honestly do. When I walk my five miles, I, I manifest. It just happens. So that's what I did today. That's wonderful. You know that manifesting is an advanced form of meditating. So you are already an advanced human being. <laughs> I, don't know. I think I'm an idiot savant, but mostly an idiot. I, that's what I think I am. Um, well, you're, you're involved with an online summit this week as we speak, right? With Dr. Uh, Helen Fisher and Marianne Williamson. And how is that going for you? It's good. It's good. My session is actually going to be on tomorrow at 1130 in the morning, Friday, 1130. And I also got to interview some of the incredible healers. And uh, it's a phenomenal idea, this summit, to just get all of these healers together to help not only individuals, but also professional coaches and um, healers and helpers. So I think it's fantastic. And it's right on the Valentine's Day week. Right. Um, so it's sort of synonymous with love. I mean, it kind of goes together. You know, we're always going to make mistakes as humans. And without mistakes, we can't forgive each other. And without forgiveness, we can't love each other. And we have to heal and all that stuff. It's very, it, it's a combination of, um, I guess, spirituality and, uh, and also pragmatic uh, techniques that everybody can understand. Because for some people, 
it might be too woohoo, but for others, you have to give them actual examples. Like you said, walking for you is your meditation, your way of manifesting. For me, it's water. Even when I take a shower, I visualize any negative energy being washed away, and then all the clean water is surrounding me with new thoughts and new manifestations and positivity and light and love. So there's so many ways and everybody's different. You know, I have animals at the retreat because I believe in pet therapy. Sometimes it's easier to talk to a goat than to your spouse. <laughs> or the last five women I've dated, apparently. There you go. These right. goats are so cute and lovable. I'll be right over. Um, <laughs> all right, race number 15, please. Uh, slide 15. All right, mm. There we go. Ava, so two years ago, 2022, you acquired this beautiful property not far from Santa Barbara, and you named it, obviously, the Lavology Retreat, which is the perfect name for that location. What is the Lavology Retreat, and what would you like people to know about it? So it's a spiritual property, which was called the Pine Mountain Buddhist Temple uh, for the past 23 years, actually. And it was known for Zen meditation, and the residents were Buddhist monks who made this place really a labor of love by opening their home for Buddhist teachings and meditation. So I really didn't want to change anything. Um, as soon as I met them, I felt this immediate sort of mind, body, soul connection. And then when they shared their desire to move to a smaller place, I knew that this magnificent place would be a perfect retreat for me. But I invite people to bring their groups and to, you know, experience this incredible place surrounded by Buddhas and crystals and um, really experience nature uh, in all its glory. Um, whether it's whether you're going to bring a meditation group or a yoga group or we have disc golf for some team sports, weddings. I love having weddings here or even boot camps. It does offer beautiful um, hiking trails. I have accommodations with houses, caravans, and tents. And uh, we have a pool, a hot tub, a fire pit, indoor fun house with games for the whole family, outdoor kids playground, and a magnificent 11 foot high stupa for stargazing. And there there I am. How's My that? For, how's that so for at timing? the top of the stupa, can you see there's a spire? Yes. Which symbolizes a line through the Earth's center around which the universe is thought to revolve. Hmm. But I have read recently that it could be a wormhole that aliens use to travel to different dimensions. And by the way, I think you turned me on to this article in India where thousands of years ago, they called them Vimanas. Correct. They called stupas Vimanas. That's right. And it's believed that stupas were designed and built as towers for UFOs. Exactly correct. That's right. That's right. They are, a Vimana was a bell-shaped UFO that the Indians saw thousands of years ago. And a stupa, I believe, according to ufology, is a tribute to the alien ancestors who perhaps gave them medicine and, and farming and, and agriculture and all these things. It's a, it's a tribute to the ancestors. But uh, your Vimana, Ava, is probably the nicest one in California, I would imagine. Uh, well, and you know, we just repainted it gold. And so you are welcome to come and visit. Just go to loveologyretreat.com. And you don't have to even bring a group. You can just come with, you know, a friend or a family or any, you know, any combination of people and choose where you want to stay. And uh, yeah, really enjoy the stargazing and seeing the galaxy. And who knows, maybe we will see a UFO together. 
You never know. We can manifest it, right? I hope, yeah. I, I, <laughs> that, that would be wonderful. I've told you when you start to see UFOs, you got to make sure I'm the first phone call because I know you a lot will of be people. the first to know. I know a lot of people. What goes on inside a stupa, Ava? Do people meditate or, or, or contemplate their navels in there? What do, what do they do inside there? Well, inside, well, there's a golden Buddha inside. And what you, it has four corners and it's used for walking meditations. You walk around the, the stupa clockwise and you say your mantras. You say your positive mantras so that the energy of the stupa can basically cleanse your mind and your body. And of course, I have a lot of Tibetan prayer flags everywhere, which also bring in the positive energy and the vibration and the frequency that you want to become enlightened. It's all about coming here to be enlightened. That's wonderful. That's really great. Yeah, I think that's so cool. Okay, so just jumping a little bit, you know, my, my, my show is called Paranormal Tonight. And this next question I want to ask you, and you and I have never, ever discussed this, but it because I have many, and I have a book coming out in May called My Paranormal Life. But have you ever had any paranormal, not UFOs or aliens, but paranormal ghosts, voices, visions, dreams that came true, any kind of things like that? I have, and it's true. We never, ever discussed this. But after my husband, Peter, died, I cleansed our home with sage, uh, walking around, blowing out the flames so that only embers remained. Um, and I said a mantra, you know, please cleanse the energy in my home that no longer serves me. And that night, I was woken up by a large orange entity that I saw on Peter's closet door, which was very scary. And I knew it was not Peter, but I felt like the sage had released a huge entity with this orange orb. And uh, as you know, the meaning of orb colors varies, but orange is for healing energy, comfort, motivation, hope, strength, and courage. Hmm. So I was very happy with uh, my experience. What did, what, what did it, was it an, oval was it around light a beam of light was it a was it, it a was person? a man it was a very large man it looked like a man you know just wow. the outside of a of a and it might not have it just looked very masculine and um yeah it was it was pretty scary and it happened the day after he died perhaps that was the spirit that took him into you know off into heaven you know that might have been his a guardian or his accompanying spirit that took him off. I never thought of it that way. It's, but, it, you know, it, I always enjoyed books like um, Seth Speaks, which I, I, uh, I, I love the, um, the messages, the consciousness, just the, the information um, that I read in those books. So I'm, I'm a big fan of quantum physics and I'm always, wanting to learn and then share my knowledge with others. So I'm very open to what you do and what you believe in as well. Uh, you will be the first, you, my mother and my daughter will get the first copies of my paranormal uh, life. <laughs> good. But I think you'll, you'll read that and you'll, uh, as I'm getting older, I'm remembering more and more things, a lot, of, certainly during childhood, but a lot of remarkable things have happened to me. Uh, in the course of my life anyway. Um, wow. So speak, speaking of aliens and UFOs, you know, I'm, I'm a nut with that stuff. Have you thought about the possibility of extraterrestrial life visiting Earth? And and the second part of that question is, if an alien knocked on your, on your door of your office right now and you opened it, it was an alien, what would you say and what, and what would you do? So I think that it's arrogant to believe that we are the only life on Earth in the whole galaxy and so my question is how can we recognize aliens to me that's really fascinating and uh yeah if an alien were to knock on my door 
I think the first thing I would ask is if I could take a photo with them as evidence, <laughs> you know, that I came face to face with an alien and then I would send it to you. Um, and then the second question I would ask is, are you hungry? I love feeding people. And I would probably feed the alien chocolate. That's assuming that they ate human food. But this uh, is true. This is very true. That's very yes. sweet. Well, you know, if you sent me the photo and I would get it out and everyone would say, oh, it's Photoshop, uh, you know, it's made, it's visual effects. It's not real. But not that's the a, real believers. They wouldn't. They'd believe it. That, that's, that's a problem because of today's digital technology. So many uh, photos and so many videos can be hoaxed. And that's a whole big problem in, in, in ufology. Uh, that I've been dealing with that with a lot of my members as well. Um, well, then you know what we need? We need people to be there. We need more evidence. <laughs> exactly. No, exactly right. That's what my Hollywood Disclosure Alliance, uh, the board of directors, that we have meetings and we talk about that. And uh, I just signed yesterday a client. He owns a 150-acre ranch in New Mexico. It's highly uh, active with UFOs every night for seven years. He has a 1,000 no, he has one terabyte of data of photos and videos. He, his partner is from NASA and the FBI. And uh, I'm going to probably be going out to this ranch in the next week or two to investigate uh, this real property. It's, it's, How it's exciting. A real, and you're going to go with the camera crew? I'm going to go with my partner, Stephen Bassett, who is uh, one of uh, the top disclosure advocates in Washington, D.C. We're going to go together and check it out. If it's legit and we feel that it's real, we're going to announce it to the world at the uh, UFO convention in June called Contact in the Desert, which I'm highly involved with as well. It's in Palm Springs. How so exciting. There's, wow. a lot there's a lot happening in this area. Um, I have a cute little surprise for you. Uh, race number 18, please. The last slide. Okay. Aww, look. look at the beautiful family. <laughs> Anjali is just gorgeous. How did you make such a beautiful daughter? <laughs> I have no, I, you know, I'm, I'm not sure I'm her father, quite frankly, you know, I really, She's I'm not. stunning. And there I was doing something uh, for, I think it was a Buzzfeed or something like that. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Anjali and I came to visit you on the set at BuzzFeed. It was on Sunset Boulevard. I don't remember what show it was. You were interviewed for a while. And then the three of us had dinner at Musu and Frank restaurant. Oh, lovely. But you know what? I can't get into that dress anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and, and neither can I. So it's, it's kind okay. of a bummer. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, if, if if I told someone, hey, here's my here's my wife and here's my daughter, people would say, Dan, how did, how did you pull that off? I mean, really, oh, yeah, we could be a whole family. I never thought of that. Look at that. Isn't that great? I mean, that's a wonderful photo. I could my daughter. be her mom. <laughs> well, I could be her father. As far as I know, I, I am. And if I'm not, I've spent a lot of money on the wrong person. But anyway, wow. as far as I know, I am. So that's my daughter, Anjali, and you and I a couple of years ago. Lovely photo. And yes. Ava, you know, there's only a few photos of you and I together. That's one. That's a very rare photo that, that right it's there. It's beautiful. I love it. It's great. We can raise, take that one down. Um, we have a, about two more minutes. Uh, we could talk a little about your late husband, Peter, who I met once or twice briefly. I never got to know him really, but why don't you tell our audience who he was and tell and talk a little bit about the book uh, about him, that he wrote that's coming out this year. So. Peter Connect was a prominent Hollywood attorney with his own practice on the Sunset Strip in LA. And I encouraged him to write his memoirs before he passed away. So I am very excited about his book coming out this spring. And the title is Blood and Justice on the Sunset Strip, the life of Hollywood criminal defense attorney Peter Connect. And he did represent many, many Hollywood and music celebrities, including Sly Stone, David Crosby, Gary Busey, Dennis Hopper, Peter Fonda, Ike Turner, Ryan O'Neill, Robert Blake. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Charles Bronson, uh, Robert Downey Jr., um, Andy Garcia, John Barrymore, and even Madam Heidi Fleiss. Really? <laughs> that, that I never knew. That's really funny. Yeah. I, yeah, wish, I, I, wish, I, I wish I had had a chance to, to get to know him more. He seemed like a really cool guy. And I know you guys were very tight 
and you're very much in love. Uh, I'm sorry that he passed, but I, I, you know, I think his spirit is in you and with you. And whenever you talk about him, your face lights up. It's really sweet. But, I, you know, you and I work together to get that publishing deal. It's going to be out on Bear Manor Media. At some yeah. Point this, this year. So once that comes out, we'll have to promote it and PR it and do all those fun things together. Well, yeah. and my next reinvention will include working with writers and producers and on turning Peter's book into a script, right? Absolutely. And I'm, yeah. that's what I'm doing. I'm doing that with After They Came. I'm working on that as well. Oh, my, my, my mother, my mother goes, when, where's the Danny? Where's the movie? Where's the movie? I go, ma, you're, you're almost 90. I don't know what's going to go first. You or the movie. I'm not oh, sure. Oh, no. Gonna, what's she'll go stay. First. She'll stay just for the movie. I, I'm to, sure of it. She's too stubborn to pass on the other side. Anyway, Ava, I love you. You're one of my best friends. How can people reach you? Well, they can reach me um, at avacadell.com or Dr. Ava Cadell on Instagram, uh, Facebook. Now I'm Ava Healer because somebody <laughs> stole my profile and oh, no. my personal Facebook. Oh, so I had no. to come up with a name. And Ava Healer is my new Facebook name. That's a good name. That's yeah. That's a good name to have. That's great. Well, thank you so much for being on Paranormal Tonight. Uh, wonderful show, really great. And uh, we'll get to, we'll have lunch or dinner soon. And then for everyone out there next week, I have Kevin Kuchaver. He's a uh, Emmy award-winning Hollywood visual effects artist. He's done a lot of top movies and TV shows. He worked on Return of the Jedi, for example. One of my best friends, Kevin Kuchaver next week. For me, danharariauthor.com. DanHarariAuthor.com is my books, my bio, my photos, and my contact. If you're interested in UFOs and joining the Hollywood Disclosure Alliance, check out HollywoodDisclosureAlliance.org. And we are going to be launching next week a donations page on Hollywood Disclosure Alliance because we are going to seek, we're a nonprofit 501c3, and we will be seeking donations to advance the cause of disclosure in the media. Thank you, Race, my producer, my brother, Race, and thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight at Paranormal Tonight. We'll see you next week. Have a good week, and look up in the sky. Don't always look down at your phones. Look up in the sky. There's a lot going on up there these days. I'm Dan Harari. See you next week. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.